Well, hello. Look who it is. I know, right? Well, thank you. Charlie Greer Podcast. Like, share, and subscribe. Comment if you want to support this <laughs> podcast. You can go to the description. There's Zell Info. Hook it up. All right. So, yeah, today the Colony Theater story. Before I do that, let me preface this. this, 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 this. I moved back to the Midwest. It's June 6th. It's summertime. Look how dark it is. It's it rain, overcast, cold, 60. What? And I'm not blaming. I mean, there's some kind of uh, global warming, weather modification, whatever. The hell. Something ain't right. I've never seen. Like, seasons are different. Like, there ain't no seasons, right? Well, every day. Rain. It's Seattle. It's the <laughs> We're living in a rainforest, I guess. June 6th. <laughs> Something ain't right. I'm not blaming the people around here. I mean, it's not just this town. or it's. Just... But nobody seems to go, oh, it's this right now, man. We need, to be... we need to make our own think tank and figure out what the hell's going on here. I mean, look at it. You need a jacket. June 6th. Buy some, forget Bye, Summer. I see you. And around here, for like, I guess the first time, like they opened the, you know, about a week ago, they opened up the swimming pool. Couldn't do it. No, nope. cold and rainy that day. I mean, it was freezing, like 54 degrees. Lord have mercy. I miss the West Coast weather. Dear Lord. So, anyway, sorry about that rant. But yeah, the Colony Theater story. So, it's crazy. This happened like 25 years ago, maybe. Uh, I just moved to St. Louis. And let me tell you what the, co so the Colony Theater, I, ha I got to find out, you know, I honestly, I probably shouldn't. Anyway, let's tell the story. I get to St. Louis. My family has like a store, like an antique kind of thing. So I'm working there and I just moved from St. Louis. I was in my twenties. I was like, what, 23 Love engineer. By then, by 94, I'd already, again, by the time I was 23, I was just haggard, been done so many road get, you know. So I moved to St. Louis, but I was still like, hey, I need something to do. I'm 23 years old. Like, where can I? I just moved to St. Louis. I didn't know what he bought, you know. Well, you can go here, there. And I started going to like the Venice Cafe in certain places and me calling uptown. Or... But my grandfather's crew it was my grandfather's store. This is before he passed. He had a crew. We had like moving trucks. And the head of the crew was Irish Tom and Big Bill. And, uh, you know, they're old school dudes. So they, uh, here I am, this young dude, you know what I mean? Long hair. So they weren't mean to me. It's just that they hadn't, you know, and they were going to, and everybody back <laughs> in that generation, everybody was busting people's balls, getting them shit. I mean, they loved each other. They're best friends. Hey, you know. And I love that. It was funny. Like now you can't even bust people's balls, man. And honestly, a lot of you'll hear on what I'm doing on my podcast. I'm just busting people's balls. I'm not seeing anything. I'm not internalizing this shit. So I love that about, oh, hey, you dumbass. But they still kind of at guard. I'd walk up. They were talking. They'd, they'd, they'd stop talking. I get it. Um. But yeah, then they were busting my balls too, you know. And so like, oh, you got to go to the when my when the family went around, my mother who when we were just with the like, oh, you got you got to go to the Colony Theater, man. So it's, it's over across the river. Oh, you'll have a good time, man. Just what's the Colony Theater? You know, so I get to Riverfront Times or whatever, and it's just like some kind of old movie theater that they've turned into like a porn theater, bar, swing club, whatever. The, I should go there, man. I got a girlfriend. Nah, just go hang out. That's in the bar. We used to do it all the time, you know. I don't know. Yeah, one of these, you know. You... So, yeah, I got curiosity, you know, killed the cat. I go, yeah, you know, I'll go. And this is before, uh, like, Google Maps and shit. And across the river, I don't know about if you know about St. Louis. Across the river is a bad East St. Louis, you know. So I think this was like Sawjay, Illinois, one of those little, it's, ah, in the industrial So I go over there. 
park in the parking lot. And it's just like this gravel parking lot. And it's big. It's kind of a big kind of, you know, old school, but it's, you know, there's security in the parking lot. I thought, well, a good thing. I mean, you're going to need it, you know. So when I walk in, it's like an old movie theater. There's like a glass counter with like, you know, food, you know, like candies and shit. And uh, you pay whatever it was, 10, 20 bucks. And they're like, look, if you go this way, it's the LGBT, you know, the gay, you know, because there's theaters. If you go that way, it's like heterosexual. Well, and then just, it, I was like, well, where's the bar? I ain't going to any of these, you know. So I go and I go into the bar. I look down the hall and it's just like about 60, you know, and there's all these weird, you know, and there's like a drape, you know, the, the entrance of these theaters. And I, I knew right away, I was like, you motherfuckers, big Bill and Irish Tom, like I, they're like cackling, you know. I need to go here. I knew exactly what they're doing because I'd seen them do this. <laughs> but this was kind of a, I mean, again, they were trying to, I don't know if they're trying to toughen me up or whatever was going on. It's like, dude, this ain't, this ain't the place to be playing around. It's all jail and don't like, you know. But, oh, well, I'm here. I need a beer. Okay, I go in the bar. And honestly, it's this older, middle-aged, I guess they were swinger. You know, they're wearing laundry. This, no, damn. I'll have a, you know, this pool. I'll play some pool. Got a pool table. Uh, start playing pool. Somebody came, hey, I'll play. You know, I played another game. And then she, there was another secret room, too. You had to either be a member or what the, I don't know what's going on. And the door would swing open every once in a while. And I'd be like, oh, what? it's like Caligula, like middle-aged Caligula. I'm out of here. Go put the pool stick on the table. You know, grab my smokes. I'm leaving. But by then, like, so the theater, the hall, go to the bar, the hall to that theater was empty. There weren't all these weirdos. So I thought, hey, I'll go duck into this first one. Because they said, you know, the further this way, you know, the last one is hetero, you know, have to keep the LGBT down, whatever. And people are, yeah, they don't matter. So I go in there, pull this big, it's like a theater drape, like this huge, heavy. And I go in there and it's packed. And I, you know, again, I can't, my eyes are just, and it was a theater, you know, like a screen and they're playing some kind of porn. And I'm walking down the aisle and I'm just seeing, and they would let you smoke. There's people, the, the glow of cigarettes, you know. <clears throat> and my eyes are adjusting. I walk, I get like about halfway down. And I hear this like, Sounds like someone mopping or squishing and, you know, just weird sound. These smell like what? I turn back and I can't, my, my eyes can't, I can't adjust. I mean, what? You know. uh, and then a guy lit a cigarette. And for that brief moment, I saw exactly what was going on. It was like, <laughs> I can't explain too much, but basically it was a gay midget gangbang. I'll just say that. Uh, it had this guy suspended. You know, I mean, I just couldn't believe it. Like a line of dudes, like, huh? What? The, you're this is supposed to be the heterosexual. I mean, again, I don't do what you're gonna do. That's just not for me. And I must have reacted like, because <laughs> this was scary. These were some scary looking, creepy. All of them were in like either jogging suits or sweatpants. I mean, there was probably twenty dudes. Or this little person. He was a dude, right? And they're dudes, so. Kind of crazy, too, what they were, <laughs> to say the least. So I'm backing up. I fall, when I get back up. You know, I made a commotion. I go, I, so I'm looking, I'm backing up. Because I realize there's some, you know, these. So, <laughs> so then I go through the drapes and I keep backing and I hit the wall. So I'm like about five foot from the. And uh, technically, I guess you're not supposed to be doing that stuff. I mean, no, hey, you know, you're not, it's not, you can't. I mean, they kind of shy away. But if you've got a whole line of it, it just turns into some kind of crazy. So like, about the time I hit the wall, the drape opens up and there's the little person. And he's got like a Raleigh Fingers mustache, like this weird kind of, and he wipes his mouth and he looks at me and kind of scolds me. And I just start, I, like, my, well, I just almost fell down laughing. I mean. Cause I knew big Bill and I'm like, dude, you guys sent me, what, how you know, you, you, you set me up. And they got the, the little dude just waddles down to 
And the one was like on the, on the uh, like I said, cameras or whatever. And she was on like a loud like, yeah, you guys get out of the hetero and go down to the. Da, da, da. So they're all oh, saying, yeah. and like a line of those 20 dudes following that little guy. I mean, dear Lord, the smell, get me out here. So I, get, I run out. And as I'm, I go out, there's literally like a, a line of limos, like nice limos. And what, where are they going out? Where are they, where, who is it? Where the hell are they going? Some kind of secret me. No, they, they pull into the driveway. They're, so I'm walking to my, and I hear like some of the security, like, oh yeah, here they are. All right. Yeah. Well, go on in and tell them and then go ahead and kick the rest of the people out. You know, we'll start the, I get to my car and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to stand here and see what's going on. So the limos start parking next to, you know, and the security and the butlers, whatever, come out. The dude first come out, you know, the the cigar, like he <laughs> dressed not off. And I, I read he was a politician. I, you know, uh, I'm going to say his name. And they all started coming out in the old <laughs> ladies, like these older ladies are all like in like latex short skirts with guard, you know, and if I hit, you know, why are they going? Can't they build their own smut fest or what? I mean, why are they going in here? I mean, maybe I should tell them what I did. <laughs> and he's just peacocking around. Like, yeah, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, hey, I'm, that's who I am. Yeah. There's just some, I guess, freaky shit. And there was probably like 20 or 30 of them. Maybe more because it was like limos. They were coming out pulling out. Yeah. All the dudes were kind of dressed conservative, like, you know, politicians, and then their wife, whoever they were, and they were older women. These are older people, man. Um, so I get, at the time, I had a muscle car. I had a Malibu Super Sport. I, you know, it's got pulled out of there, throwing gravel. They were like, hey, don't you ever come back. Yeah, I was young and dumb. And then getting, I got lost. Like, what the hell? Like, I got home, you know, just in that area, and then just crossing the Property Street Bridge, you know, it just kind of ain't good. And I'm thinking, you know what? Should I even tell Big Book? Should I give them the, because I know they sent me, I've, I've seen them doing it to other people. Oh, yeah, go try that food over there. It's great. I mean, that's what they did. They bust people's ball. Ha, 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 and laugh. That's the only time I've seen them laugh. That's what, that's what they would do. Man, they set me up. They did this to you know, pays me or whatever it was. I'm like, should I tell them? So I was like, no, I ain't gonna. And I didn't tell them I was gonna go. I told, matter of fact, I said like, I ain't going. And I saw because there was an ad, a advert in like the Riverfront Times. I saw the Colony Theater. Why would you get? No, it's the bar's cool, man. You know. So I didn't. I kind did you go? I'm like, no. Uh, I'm just going to Venice Cafe or Mekong, you know, just fine. And then one day we were there, like it was just me and Big Bill and Irish Tom. And I said, look, man, I don't appreciate you guys telling me at the Colony Theater. And they're like, ha, ha, ha. And it's like, fell down laughing. You went then, you know? Yeah, I went because I, you know, come on. Technically, I'm looking for approval from you guys. You're older than me. I got to learn the road. I mean, you're telling me, I mean, what, what the hell? I mean, I trusted you. Laughing their asses off. Then I told tell I said they're like, what the heck? they're like, dude, that that you that was a, a mild night then. I told them about the politician. They're like, oh yeah, he he just I wonder if the I should have Googled the colony theater if it's still around. Cause that area across from the river, um, like say you cross the Poplar Street Bridge, you take a right there, and I know that saw Jay. It's like an industrial place. So there was like strip clubs, like the Diamond Club, PTs, and then there was Pops, which is like a club for bands. Um, and we would all go there. Me and my girlfriend, we everybody went there. There was food there. It was huge, too. And nice. We'd mostly go to like the Diamond Club. Just a party. And a lot of times they'd have like promotions and everything. Uh, so if you bought a ticket at the Diamond, then you could go your their sister club at the... Um, uh, PTs was like behind it, big but not as big and not you know. 
So when we in 99, I'd moved back for like about seven months and we, a couple of friends, business partners, we're going to start a, a skateboard company. Uh, and I don't even know why somehow they did a promote. We ended up at the dime, like, Hey, we're going to do a promotion. There's a bunch of us going there. And it was some kind of promotion. I don't remember maybe a radio person hooked. I don't know. I just know that we went, so we go there and it was cool and it was packed and, so, you know, it's cash only, you know, we're drinking, it's expensive. So I'm like, yeah, where's the, you got an ATM? He's like old ATM, let's go to the ATM. And, and I'm right then and there, you could see, you know, all these people, whatever. I got jumped at the ATM in front of everybody, strippers, my girlfriend, my business partner, all like, I got jumped by like four dudes. I was getting like a hundred dollars out of the ATM and they were just, oh uh, yeah. So there was a fight. I'm defending myself, you know? Um, and then all these doors, I could see these guys and they literally like Nunzio, like got like mob looking dudes in suits come out. One guy had like a fucking like bike. And... Remember I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Cause I could see them before though. And then these guys are still hitting me. I'm like, Hey, Hey, Hey. So they separate us and they, uh, put a beating on those like four guys that jumped in. I mean, like, and they ex escort me out too. And they have so many people, all the, they, 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 they could see my part and they're like, look, we, we, we watch this on camera. We know that you didn't, you know, instigate this. They jumped you at the, we're so sorry. Did you get your money? And they're like, yeah, I got my money. What the hell? Yeah. No, no, no. But you have, by, by law, you have to leave. But uh, we're going to reward you at the system. PTs, we're giving, they give me all these, like, tickets and this, that drink. I don't even, you know. And I went down, and when I, time I got outside, they were just wailing on these four guys. You know? The cops were there to came in, you know. Stupid. And again, it's like I got jumped. You could hear them talking. But there's still people like Charlie. What did you do? What did you? Bad luck. I mean, I just happened to be paying for all your drinks. I had to go get money. Duh. You get jumped. You know, some shit happens. And we did. We went to PT. <laughs> we got the passes and went and got the free drinks or whatever. You know. Um. And Pops is there was a club. I think Pops is still around. They had you know bands tour. And, But that area is not good. And if Colony Theater's around, I wouldn't, I mean, my dumbass went by myself. But then again, if my girlfriend went and come, you know, she was something that my friend would work. I don't know. This, and it was early in the night. It was probably like on a Friday or Saturday night around like 9 or 10. And I never went back. I would rarely go to those clubs. I remember they used to have a... Um, like a happy hour. It was a roast beef happy hour. So you paid to get in and they'd like feed your roast beef and you had to buy your drinks and stuff. And I would even take our crew sometimes. They were older. They didn't give a They just want the roast beef. Um, and even that, that plate, if they're still there, I mean, it's not a good area. There's no homes and, you know, just industrial across the river from Missouri. You know, I mean, St. Louis, it's, it's, it's rough. Matter of fact, I've been in some rough play. That's one of the worst I've ever. Is East St. Louis? I had to do a radio interview in East St. Louis. Me and a uh, Beetle Bob. It damn near didn't get out. Uh, and why they were in East St. Louis? I haven't. Maybe they were. Maybe that was another. You know. But this story is the definition of just because you can, don't mean you should. You know, just because I can go to the Colony Theater. Doesn't mean I should go to the Colony Theater, you know. I think about these things, you know, again, I, I live my life by a certain way. Like, just because I can cackle and tell everybody what's on my mind doesn't mean I should. Just because I can contradict people about something I don't know and they just call them a liar to their faces. I was just trying to talk. It doesn't mean I should because I don't do that. But people don't live it. They're just on a linear. They're not thinking things out. It's just... They don't think about action, reaction. No, there's that, that, that you get. Most of the time, don't even know what the fuck they're talking about, which is a lie. And two, then they're they're calling someone else a liar. I contradict them. But yeah, just because you can go to the colony theater doesn't mean you should go. <laughs> don't go.
Done got. I mean, Grant, maybe, maybe if you got, uh, you know, 10 people with you and you all, <laughs> you're all armed. No, I get But yeah, I mean, again, I, as old as I am now, I mean, I'm 51. I would never, I wouldn't even pass my mind. But when you're 23 and you just moved to the city, and technically that was the first real city experience I'd had. Like I live right in the city. And didn't know anybody. I'd go visit my, you know, the store every now and then, but I didn't know, you know, and again, it's kind of hard to meet people when you're in a big city. You know, I just moved there. So, hey, just check everything out. Nope, not going here. No, nope, not going there. Nope, nope. And the people I were meeting at the store were just older. It's antique stores. It's like old ladies and, you know, not meet, meet any hipsters. at the. And we were pulling estates and doing estate sales. It, it, no. Not good for your social. I mean, if you're older, I get. And those old ladies used to hit on me. Like, like, can you reach that? Can you get that quote for me? And then they like grab my ass, like, huh? And laugh about it. And like right there in the open, you know, I was like, hey, come on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I had to go out, like, you know, and again, Big Bill and Irish Tom, they kind of set me, I mean, they were busting my ball. I mean, it's funny. I can laugh about it. And we did, right? You know, it's, uh, <laughs> it's kind of funny to. But that old generate, they were more tougher and kind of just got a little grit on them, you know, just um, that's something they'd want to do. Let's send this guy. Oh, yeah, he wants to find out what's going to send him to cross there. You'll love it. Yeah. Uh -huh. But I miss those dudes. Irish Tom and Big Bill have passed. Um, learned a lot from those two, mostly Big Bill, because Irish Tom, he retired that first year and I, uh, big bill stayed with us till like 98. I was there for four years. Um, learned a lot from some of those older dudes, man. And then the older dudes, like the world war two guys that were my grandfather's, uh, generate learned a lot from those dudes and women too. The older generation learned how to hustle and sell and do this and Hey, and collect and that bit do. Yeah. Colony Theater. Good old days. I wouldn't recommend going to the... Hey, you never know. Maybe it's changed. Maybe they redid the place. And, but I, I, it's probably... I mean, come on. Nowadays, God. But look, uh, I love you. Again, if you want to support the Charlie Greer podcast, you can like, share, subscribe, comment. If you want to support it, just get in the description. Zell, I love y'all. Be blessed, and I'll see you tomorrow. Cheers.